very intensely busy year, winding up our celebrations from the 75th anniversary of the year before, uh, major acquisitions, uh, attendance uh, topped 30,000 again for the third year in a row, which has uh, grown exponentially for the net last nine years. Um, busy schedule of changing exhibitions, of course, and uh, mainly planning uh, for the uh, forthcoming uh, expansion of the museum into the east and west uh, ends of the second floor. Last October, we celebrated with about 100 members of the, the Ball family, cousins from all over the country, uh, to celebrate our major patron for the last 40 years, David Owsley for whom the museum was renamed. Uh, we are now the David Owsley Museum of Art, Ball State University, and, uh, and very proud to be celebrating that uh, very thoughtful and generous man's uh, uh, contributions to the museum in many, many different ways, mainly uh, in the development of the museum's collection. Uh, he's an unusual collector and, and art historian uh, in that he's curious about everything. Uh, sort of works from the Pacific Islands, Africa, uh, and I'm not talking about just a few, but major collections. Uh, a major group of uh, Chinese sculptures in stone have come to the museum over the last 10 years, uh, even since I've been there, uh, really changing the character of the place and just bursting us uh, from the seams of our former confines. We'll be adding about 10,000 square feet of exhibition space uh, in an Asian wing uh, in the eastern end of the building, uh, and ethnographic art, art from Africa, Mesoamerica, and uh, uh, the Pacific Islands in, in the, the western end of the second floor. Before that, we've got to get things started, uh, and uh, construction, I suspect, is going to begin around the end of June this year. We anticipate completion of the construction phase in uh, January 2013, uh, which will begin our reinstallation of the collection. We're working with a wonderful team of lighting designers and exhibition designers. Uh, uh, Charles Frome, uh, who had been with the Museum of Modern Art for many years, uh, and uh, the lighting design is being done by George Sexton, who was the chief designer at the National Gallery for a number of years. This will really up the museum uh, quite, a, quite a notch from the way it had been installed previously. We will remain open uh, in spite of what anyone tells you, uh, right through uh, the thing, the core of the museum, the sculpture court, and the Western European and American sections uh, which are the traditional galleries that uh, alumni remember from years and years ago, will remain open throughout the, the construction process. There may be a little dust, but we're trying to keep it under control.
We were very fortunate June a year ago to find a uh, very important painting by Sir Joshua Reynolds uh, at auction at Christie's in New York, which David Owsley brought to my attention. Uh, and I happened to be on the East Coast and dropped by to see it just as it was being installed for the preview of the sale. And everything uh, rang a bell, uh, including the subject, uh, who was a very interesting fellow named Francis Bassett, uh, who was later uh, knighted and had very fancy titles attached to him. But this painting was done uh, by Joshua Reynolds uh, at uh, Bassett's commission as he was leaving Cambridge University after only two years and he's posing in his academic robes, which are very lavishly trimmed with uh, gold braid, uh, with his mortarboard kind of stowed on a platform behind him as he's leaning in a very English gentlemanly way uh, against a parapet uh, with some trees blowing in the background. And he had it made for a friend of his back at Cambridge, never owned it, never lived with it, but had sent it back there. And it remained in this friend's family until it was uh, until early in the 20th century when it came to the United States. One of the main things uh, that I've alluded to already is uh, to try to rethink the collection. We've been working with uh, a number of uh, consultants, uh, a woman named Miriam Springle, uh, working on the, an interpretive plan for the museum, which we hope has very long-term implications. Uh, we're thinking about everything from the way labels are written, the way graphics are placed, the density with which objects are grouped, uh, to try to uh, make the collection as accessible as possible, not only to scholars and people that have a great deal of sophistication about visiting museums, but also about the, uh, the freshmen uh, from small town Indiana who may never have visited an art museum before. Uh, how do we make this uh, a place that you would want to come back to uh, again and again during your four years at Ball State? It's really an exceptional resource and, and we're attempting to put the museum back together in as thoughtful a way as possible to appeal to as many different audiences as we can.